All right, we're going to solve this problem together. But first, pause the video. Try to solve it on your own. I'm sure you can do it. Okay, so first let's read the problem. Which phrase describes a nonlinear function? That's just a relationship where this, the rate of change is not constant. And I know the answer is A right away because I see that it says the area. And if we're analyzing area or volume, those are not linear. And we'll look at that in a second. In the other cases, you can go through them, but if you think about each of them individually, you realize, oh yeah, that would grow at a constant rate, especially perimeter. So let's look at perimeter first um, to, so you get a sense of a linear function and how to figure it out, and then we'll go to the area. So the perimeter of a square as a function of the side length. That means the perimeter of a square based on, as a function of, means based on the side length. So let's say we have a square, right, and we want to find the perimeter. Well, what if each side is one? What's the perimeter? Let's make a little table. Side length, perimeter. If each side is one, the perimeter is four. What if each side length is two? What happens? Well, if each side length is two, it's two, four, six, eight, right? The perimeter is eight. What if each side is three, right? If each side is three, the perimeter is three, six, nine, twelve. And already what you might notice is that this is linear. In other words, every time we increase the side length by one, the perimeter goes up by four. This is a constant rate of change, a constant slope. So here, it's a linear function. What about the area of a circle, right? Well, the area of a circle, a circle is just equal to the area of a circle. It's just pi times radius times radius. And this radius squared essentially is going to throw that off. And they say the area of a circle is a function of the radius. That means the area of a circle based on the radius. So let's look at the radius of 1, 2, and 3. If the radius is 1, pi r squared is pi times 1 times 1. Our area is just equal to pi, which is really cool. Um, just to have an area. Pi. Pi. That's the area. Isn't that cool? Anyway, if the radius is 2, it's pi times 4. So pi times 4. 2 is 2 squared is 4. And if the radius is 3, it's pi times 9. Right? And is this linear? Is it going up by the same amount? Well, the answer is no. And you can calculate this uh, using the pi button to get a real like, nice estimate. But I'm just going to show you um, an approximate area. Right, this is my third column. It's, that's my estimation sign. This is an estimation of the area. Pi is about 3, right? So here the area is 3. Here the area is about 3, excuse me. Here the area is about 12. And here the area is about 27. 3 times 9 is 27. Look at the rate of change. First we're going up 9 for every 1. And that's okay as long as we keep going up 9. But here you can see we jump up from 12 to 7, 27. And that's up 15. So we're going to 9, then we're going up 15, and here in the radius we're still increasing just by 1, and that's not a constant rate of change. A constant rate of change would be just like with the square over here in the perimeter. If we increase the radius by 1, that the area should go up by some constant amount, but that's not happening. So the area is not linear. All right, hope this helped.